Assalamualaikum, very good morning uh, to all participants. I hope you can see my screen uh, clearly. All right, so what I'll be sharing for today basically is on uh, preparing for Viva Defense. Uh, one thing that I cannot promise you is that you will surely pass with flying colors. Uh, I will uh, just be sharing with you my experience uh, as a student myself uh, and supervising a uh, few students of my own. Uh, as well as based on my experience uh, for six years as the postgraduate uh, uh, postgraduate managers okay for the uh, faculty of electrical engineering all right so uh, i'll be divided my uh, sharing session today for uh, to two uh, sections uh, to two parts the first one is talking about the critical essence of the viva defense itself which is the thesis uh, and then later on, I'll be sharing the second part on the oral uh, defense process. So before we talk about VIVA, so I just want to have a quick introduction on research degrees, what research degrees uh, are all about. So uh, we have gone through uh, several, uh, meaning that our degrees, our bachelor degrees, okay, some of you are taking masters, you have done that, uh, graduated with your bachelor degrees. Uh, for those who are doing PhDs, you have done your bachelor's and you have done your master's. <clears throat> so how about PhD de uh, degrees? So the coverage is more towards on instilling the ability to discover and to contribute uh, for expanding knowledge frontiers in such a way that uh, you can become an authority in your specialized uh, uh, field of specializations. So PhD and MPhil, okay, uh, so the terms uh, PhD, Doctor of Philosophy, and MPhil, Master of Philosophy, are philosophical in nature. So this is the five phases that uh, we need to uh, understand. So why understanding these five research phases is important? Because the way how the thesis going to be written would pretty much follow these research phases. When we are working with academic research okay we need to follow sci a proper scientific method so a good academic research okay must be number one is must be controlled uh, so you cannot do research when you cannot control your variables okay so there are too many variables until you are not sure of okay whether the results is affected by variable a or variable b <clears throat> especially when you are Exploring, okay, the causality, okay, what will affect what, okay, uh, and also all the procedures and methods used, okay, must be critically scrutinized, okay, so that you know you can justify why you are uh, using uh, such uh, procedures, okay, and why you are using certain methods, um, and also uh, systematic procedures must follow logical and justified sequence. So there are sequences that you have to do. For example, you have to do uh, sequence A followed by sequence B uh, because there are certain uh, logical explanations. And also when you are uh, running your experimentation or simulations, so it must be also rigorous, okay? In a way that uh, the procedures that you follow are relevant, uh, appropriate and justified, and the data sets that you're using are able to show the uh, not only a case, but also the average and the worst case also. Uh, the basis of finding must be valid, okay, and verifiable, uh, and any conclusions that you uh, could draw uh, in your thesis are based only uh, on hard evidence. We are, you are preparing is basically on the examinations of your thesis. So based on that, we have to, what is a thesis, okay? So a thesis basically is a documented evidence, okay, that manifested the research outcome. In the case of PhD and MPhil degrees, so thesis is the full fulfillment. Your passing or your failing to obtain or to get your degree depends solely on your thesis, on how you, def or how you defend your thesis and also the thesis itself. Compared to uh, Master of Science or Master of Engineering or Bachelor of Engineering, where uh, your uh, dissertations or report are as partial fulfillment. 
So there are other fulfillment that you have to fulfill uh, and dissertation and report are just part of this overall fulfillment. Uh, an academic thesis can be challenged and it is expected that the candidate must be able to defend it. Okay. Uh, in general, okay, uh, thesis must have one solid storyline. Uh, although uh, based on, uh, depending on school of thought, uh, some uh, researchers may disagree when we say that thesis uh, is, a, is a story, is a storytelling, but uh, I think all would agree that a thesis must have one solid storyline. So if I want to link uh, the five research phases that I have uh, mentioned before this, okay, to the ideas, okay, on how you're going to write your thesis, it could be something like this, all right? So based on this, okay, uh, based on the previous slide, we understand what research stage is all about. So we can come out with uh, a minimal thesis organizations. Okay. However, bear in mind that each thesis is unique. It depends on specific uh, field of interest or field of research that you are doing. It also depends on you as a writer and also depending on the editor, which is your supervisors. Okay. So these are basically the <clears throat> uh, good starting point. Uh, of course, the first one you would have your abstract. So abstract is a, a very short summary of the thesis describing the important parts of your thesis, the problem, the research uh, approach, and also rising on the uh, original contribution. Abstract is just uh, the summary or uh, what I usually say to my students, it is just a movie trailer, okay? <clears throat> it is not a summary of thesis anyway. So chapter one is when uh, the introduction chapter is when you overview the problem uh, and then you give value to the problem uh, stating on how important it is. You define your problem, okay, and then you summarize uh, existing works and the statement of your hypothesis or specific questions to be explored. So the key point here is that the introduction can, shouldn't be too long, okay? It shouldn't be too long and, and you should make it readable by everyone. Second chapter basically, and is when you reviewing the literature. This is basically the outcome of your uh, reading. The first thing that you uh, that that must be there is the uh, synthesis uh, of the state of the art solutions related to the thesis work. Okay, so you have to review uh, contemporary solutions. Uh, you may also include background of the problem if you want to define it much more clearly. Okay. Uh, to guide readers to understand the scope and the context of your contributions later on. So uh, the third chapter is basically on the methodology. Okay, basically this is your proposed uh, work. Okay, it is should be the central concept of your work. You have to specify your method of research. You have to uh, specify your research design and procedures, uh, subject samples of studies. Uh, and also the construction of valid and reliable instruments for you to do your proving and all this. Uh, <clears throat> chapter four is basically on validations. So this is where you describe if you need to experimental details so that you can provide evidence to convince the readers on your thesis validity. Okay. Uh, and also to convince on the systematic methods that you use and also uh, it is uh, your logical arguments okay to support your work and chapter five uh, could be your conclusion so where you summarize what you have learned and how this can be applied how it's going to improve the current solution state and also for you to mention possibility future research in terms of the structure okay so the structure of your presentation would have the structure of uh the the flow of the thesis itself which is it must have this uh, motivation of work problem definitions research gaps uh, aim and objective and so on okay so now let's talk about the defense process all right so like i mentioned previously okay the for mphil and phd 
your passing or your failing your PhD comes from your thesis. So that's why in the first part of the uh, presentation, I talk about the importance of the thesis itself. Okay, so now what, let's assume that, so you have written your thesis, so you have now submitted your thesis for examinations. So what comes next? All right, so thesis examination or oral examination is a process to make sure, to assert that the candidate is capable of making original, valuable contribution in the active field of research, number one. Number two is that the candidate for PhDs uh, is supposed to be at the PhD level. And the candidate for an MPhil supposed to be at that master's level so that they can work as a specialist. So meaning that the candidates have comprehensive knowledge okay expected at their level okay and in his or her specific area of research and to make sure that the candidate is capable of performing independent research so this is highly important for phd candidates and the body of knowledge uh, submitted in the thesis is comprehensive the viva process okay is when you will defend your thesis and it is arranged after all examiners have given their initial results so once you submitted your uh, thesis so the thesis will be sent to the examiners that uh, were endorsed by the school or the faculty uh, and then once we have received the examiners so we will call for oral defense sessions so it will be attended by number one the candidate uh, himself or herself uh, the supervisors the examiners and it will be chaired by a chairman okay and op optionally you may have a representative of the school and faculty all right uh, and this may or may not be a good sign all right so typically is that when a representative of school or faculty have to attend so uh, the the viva session it means that there is there could be a potential conflict that need to be resolved okay so this is optional okay for a representative of faculty or school to attend all right so and then the candidate will be allowed to give uh, 20 minutes presentation for mphil candidate and 30 minutes for phd to present uh, uh, their works all right and then it will typically followed by two q and a sessions number one is the Top down uh, Q and A, and then the second session we will go into page by page uh, examinations of the thesis. Okay, and then afterwards the candidate would be asked to leave the room for deliberations by the examiners, with or without the supervisors. Okay, so this is uh, the power vested to the chairman. Okay. Uh, depending on the situations, okay, whether deliberations is without with the supervisors or could be the supervisors are, are asked to leave the say, the room, okay. Uh, it can take anywhere between 1.5 up to five hours, six hours, okay. I have seen six hours uh, viva. All right. <clears throat> so, who are the thesis exam? Okay, thesis examiners uh, are the endorsed examiners by the school or by the faculty based on the nomination of the supervisor. So the nomination of super, uh, of by the supervisor is not final, meaning that the school or the faculty may actually change. Okay, the examiners uh, to other suitable examiners. All right, and all examiners. Are the, the domain experts. So I use the term domain expert because he or she or they may not actually work in your really specific area, your specific field of research, but in the general uh, area of research. All right. And uh, I just put the examiners are human after all. So humans are unique. So you cannot really uh, predict. Okay, which examiners you will get, what type of examiners, 
the one that smiles a lot or the ones that never smile, okay, the one which is old, the one which is young and so on. We, you can have a mix of those. So uh, we, I cannot guarantee, okay, uh, which one you will get, okay? So the outcome, okay, of the thesis examinations could be either one of these five uh, for PhDs uh, and then for uh, MPhil, you don't have the D one. Okay, so what are these? Uh, A, meaning that you don't have corrections, except probably for few typos that you can fix within half an hour. Okay, so but in general, it's considered that there are no corrections are required. Uh, probably you will find it one every 500 and so on. So put, you know, get these uh, results. Uh, most students will come under this category, which is pass with corrections. All right. So B is pass with corrections. So there are two subcategories. One which is B1, where minor corrections are required and to be verified by supervisors, uh, mostly on the presentation or the content of the thesis. It's more like a, the writing, typos, editorial kind of uh, corrections. B2. Okay, is when you have major corrections. Okay, meaning that you have to rerun some of your experimentations, so you might need to do further analysis. Okay, uh, so it typically covers on improvement on the content and the presentation of the thesis. You are given up to six months. So when I say given up to six months, of course you can actually submit after one day. Okay, if you're able to fulfill all the concerns raised by the examiners. Uh, C, okay, is that your current state of your thesis is not accepted, but the examiners see uh, that uh, there are uh, merit, okay, if you do further uh, rework, then the thesis has, um, uh, you know, uh, can, can, can contribute okay to your uh, to knowledge so for mphil you'll be given six months up to six months and for phd up to 12 months okay i forgot to mention that for b1 for mphil is one month and b2 for mphil is three months sorry i i i, I forgot to put that so these three months and six months are for phds one month and three months for mphil so there are two subcategories for c number one is c1 uh, without oral examinations. So since you have to resubmit your thesis, you have to repay the fees for thesis examinations, uh, but without calling for oral examination sessions, the final result will be based on the lowest decision by the examiners. Meaning that if one examiner give B1, another examiner give B2, then the outcome of your uh, re-examination of thesis is going to be B2. All right. So in the case of C2, so you will have oral examinations that you have to undergo again one more time, and you will have the final results deliberated um, by the examiners. Okay. And for PhD only, you may have D. Okay. The results uh, of D, the, uh, where instead of getting a PhD, you will be awarded MPhil degree instead. And the correction now is to be verified by the supervisors on. So this is basically, you're, you're coming for PhDs, but you are getting MPhil instead. And the, the lowest one, which is E, you will not be awarded any degree at all. 